today we are going to talk about how we manage all the dependencies we, we use in the RDO or within the Cloud Seek. So a short introduction. Uh, we, this is Alfredo, my colleague. We're both uh, Red Hat employees. We uh, work mainly on, on RDO and uh, we take care of three main areas. One of them is uh, turn off the mic. So one of them is packaging. Uh, which Alfredo is most uh, dedicated to, uh, automation and CI, this is my part, and RDO infrastructure, which is kind of my part, but also Alfredo is, is contributing to. So let's, uh, let's go to the, to the issue at hand. So how do, how do we manage the OpenStack dependencies? So we know already that, uh, that the OpenStack project is uh, producing a lot of different projects. So we have like more than 300 uh, basic uh, packages uh, we are building in RDO. But we don't only have that, we, al we also have all the dependencies. So the OpenStack community has like 500 different Python packages uh, that different projects depend on. So this is quite uh, complicated to manage. Fortunately, we have a single requirements repository where all those uh, dependencies are uh, stored. So we have a single, a single text file that looks like this that says, okay, these are the Python dependencies we have for all different OpenStack projects. The goal uh, behind this is to have a, what they call co-installability, so we don't have a collision between different dependencies when we try to install Neutron and Nova on the same machine, because Neutron depends on event-led version whatever, but doesn't work with event-led version whatever plus one, and then Nova requires it and the other way around. So, so basically the goal is to make sure that we have a single repository where we store all dependencies and that we can uh, refer to whatever we need to look at, uh, at a new dependency to add for a project. So this is nice, but uh, this is a very fast moving target because we have new dependencies being added every now and then. So whenever a new project des decides that they require, let's say, a new DNS resolving library, uh, they may they may go and open a change to this uh, repository and say okay I need I need Python DNS version blah 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 I mean as a minimum okay and also uh, we have uh, automated bots proposing new versions of dependencies as soon as they are uploaded to PyPy so this means that we as an uh, as an OpenStack distribu distribution not only need to ship all the uh, OpenStack bits, but we also need to make sure that all the dependencies are also shipped in and packaged in RPM and shipped in our uh, RDO repositories. So whenever we have a new version of a dependency of a new or a new dependency, we have to go package that version or package that new uh, that new project, include it in the in the repositories, test that everything works fine, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it takes some time. And to make things funnier, uh, each OpenStack release and we have a new OpenStack release every six months, has different versions of dependencies and different dependencies. So whenever, so we had the Rocky released in last September, and now we have a new branch, which is stable Rocky, and then we have master. So we have, initially they were the same dependencies, but now they are deviating. So we may have to ship a version of a dependency for Rocky, a different version of the same dependency for master, because that's what projects in master depend, depend on. So that makes things a bit complicated. We have to keep a new, a complete set of dependencies every six months. So managing dependencies manually felt a little bit like this. So we were looking at CI jobs, and then we had Neutron fail, and said, OK, we started digging into the, uh, the, the logs. And so, right, so this is because we need Python, event, uh, Python eventlet 0.20.1. Fine, so we go fix that, run a new CI job, and then Nova fails. And then we go into the logs and say, okay, that's because they added a new dependency and that's whatever thing we need to package, right? So we go package, fix it, and again, and again, and again, and again. So it was a real pain to, to manage the dependencies because it was a never ending story. We always kept uh, stumbling into new issues. So we decided to fix this. Better now? Yeah. Okay. So uh, one of the first things we had to do when dealing with dependencies was to create a set of policies about how to manage them. Because at the very beginning, it was kind of case-by-case -case management. And we 
realized that we started having problems, okay? And whenever having uh, CentOS packages is free, our good friends from CentOS provide us, the OpenStack packages are quite easy to manage also because all them have a common policy, release management, etc. But for dependencies, it's kind of mess. Most of them are Python packages, but not all of them because some dependencies are also virtualization software, MariaDB, uh, database, messaging, all those is dependencies also. So first thing to do it is, okay, when there is a new dependency, how are we going to manage that? How, where we can get that package into our DO repos? So the first obvious thing is, okay, if the dependency is already in CentOS, it's free, let's use it, no problem. This is still tricky because most of the times the version in the CentOS, you know that CentOS focus on stability, more having everything fast. So many of the times, usually the version in CentOS is not the one that up, upstream OpenStack is using to test things, okay? In that case, we are being conservative and we are saying, okay, if it works with CentOS package, let's use it, that's it, because CentOS is providing uh, already security and back, fi and back fixing, so we trust a lot of those on those, so let's use it. Only when there is real known issues affecting real users or CI, we provide the same, a new version of, of that package in RDO. And always in that case, we report into RHEL or CentOS to try to get fixed in RHEL also. If the package is not in CentOS, okay, then next thing is see if there is another SIG. You know that, uh, well, all, how many people know what uh, SIG in CentOS and how many SIGs? <coughs> no many people? Just Matthias? Okay. So SIGs are, SIGs are special interest groups, which are a group of people inside CentOS community building software or building packages to run on top of CentOS, but which is not a rebuild or what is in Red Hat Enterprise Linux, okay? So that includes OpenStack, in Cloud Seek, as Heikel just explained, but includes, for example, virtualization software. There is a, a, a Kubernetes, for example. I don't know if Spiros is still here, but I think Spiros package for Kubernetes for the virtualization special interest group, for example. We have another one building uh, so, uh, storage software, for example, Ceph, etc. So many times when we need a, a package, okay, for example, virtualization software, which is not in CentOS base, another special interest group is already providing that. In that case, we will just reuse what they are providing, and that's it. That's very easy also. We can consume from their repos, or we can reuse their builds and include in our uh, our RDO repositories, but that's case by case, okay? Oops. Yeah. Okay. And finally, if it's not in CentOS base and it's not in uh, produced by any other special interest group, we need to rebuild to get it into RDO. We will take care of rebuilding that package and providing in our own repos, okay? And we all know that Fedora is the upstream to RHEL and CentOS. So our policy is that if we want to rebuild a, cent a, a dependency in CentOS, and we always need or require to have it in Fedora. So we will always re uh, rebuild a Fedora build into CentOS. In case that is not even in Fedora, we will take care of adding it to Fedora and bring it to RDO. In that way, we are sure that the package will be long-term maintained and we will be aligned what, we, what it is in upstream and long-term in CentOS and RHEL, okay? That's it. There are some few cases when we need to fork Fedora just to provide fix because the, the packages in Fedora does not work as is in CentOS. In those cases, we exceptionally have to fork them inside RDO and Revit. So that's the priority or the order, the workflow when there is a new dependency, what we need to take care to get it into RDO. 
Okay, so now that we have the issue and we have a set of constraints, this is the proposal. So we sat down and started thinking about how we could automate the whole uh, dependency management thing to, to avoid all this, go back and forth and, and, and try to s fix stuff manually. So we started basing on, basing on three pillars. First, we want to be proactive because uh, most of the time issues come because uh, a project decides to go for a higher version of a dependency and that's not the one we have packaged, so then, then we see the issue in CI. What we want to do is check this requirement tree we have upstream in OpenStack and make sure that whenever there is a change and they increase the minimum version required or the version they, they are accepting for a project, we go and rebuild it instead of waiting until it fails. So second, second thing is we want to be automated. We don't want to be building packages by hand all the time, which is boring. So we want to react to changes in this requirement repo and then use CVS via a, be a CI job and automate those builds instead of having to go manually run CVS, build, blah, 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 blah. And finally, we want to be tested. So even if we have a new package and that package is the same version that we are using upstream, we don't want to use it unless it passes a, a scratch build, so that scratch build works fine. We don't want to build and have it fail afterwards. And then we have a set of CI jobs, and we want to make sure that those CI jobs are successful. So basically, the, the idea is we want to track upstream repositories, see whenever there are changes, and react to those changes automatically and test them. So yeah, all of, all of this seems like we want to do this kind of uh, cat thing, writing, writing a unicorn, blah, blah, blah. But we kind of got there. So, so, so let's see how we did that. So this is our tool set. We have two main tools where we build the whole uh, RDO thing. Uh, the first thing is RDO info. RDO info is just a repository we have uh, with a set of YAML files. And the YAML files define uh, all of our packages. So we have one set of uh, YAML files for the pure RDO thing, so all the OpenStack projects that we build in RDO. And we have another, another YAML file that looks like this, where we are defining the dependencies. So we have like two different dependencies here, uh, Python Bush and Python PyMySQL. Okay, and we have a set of tags assigned to this project. So we specify that this is a Fedora dependency. These are all the, the build sys tags define these are the, the versions we are building for each of the different OpenStack releases. So we have Pike, we have Queens, we have Rocky, we are starting with Stein, and all this stuff. In this case, we see that we may have the same version in different releases, or we may have different versions. So it, it really depends on how the project is managed upstream. So if they require uh, a new version in Stein that's not the same one we had in Rocky, okay, we'll bump it in Stein and keep it the same it was in Rocky. And the second part is Software Factory. So who knows what software factory is? Yes, only. Okay. So I'll I'll show a quick example. So software factory is just a, a distribution of several useful tools we are using in the OpenStack community. So we are using Garrett upstream to do all code reviews. So we have Garrett included in the in the distribution. Upstream we are using Zool as a CI tool, so Zool will, whenever there's a change in Garrett, Zool will kick in, run a set of CI jobs, and then uh, show the results <coughs> in the review. So we are using Zool in Software Factory. And then Zool uses Notepool, which is a, a tool to create ephemeral VMs that are used for these one-time CI jobs. So we just have a, an OpenStack cloud uh, behind, behind the scenes where we create VMs. Zool will uh, run the job there and then publish the results on Garrett. So we have several more tools uh, in, uh, packaged inside the software factory, but these are the three main tools. Okay, so so this is our production server. This is our Garrett instance. We have so many different changes. Uh, we are not going to, to show all of them. Alfredo will uh, discuss some of them later in, in more detail. And this is what Zool looks like. So we have several jobs running and for each of them, we have a number of uh, different jobs okay, that we will report, and then we will see in this uh, Garrett review what the result is. The nice thing is we have a team in, well, I'm working, my team is working on, on packaging this uh, software factory thing. It's all built on, uh, on Ansible playbooks that we use to uh, automate the whole uh, configuration thing. So it, 
it works quite well, and uh, it also allows us to uh, to scale pretty well because we, we can add new SOOL executors. We have we can easily uh, share uh, the same SOOL instance between different Gerrit instances. We have actually two of them running on the same SOOL, so it's pretty easy to manage, and it mimics the OpenStack infrastructure pretty well. So if you ever need to uh, to use uh, or to create your own OpenStack-like infrastructure, you can have a look at Software Factory and ask us. Whoops. So, it's all yours now. Okay. Okay, so this is look like a dependency update looks like in OpenStack project, okay, in upstream OpenStack. So periodically, uh, the, the, uh, dependencies are compared with what we are testing in where we are using in OpenStack, not RDO, but upstream OpenStack, and uh, what is available in PyPy or in last releases in, in Python projects. Uh, it's proposed automatically to update to the last one, okay. When this is done by a bot, a set of test jobs will run to test that all projects, or most of the projects, the most important projects, work with this new version of the dependency. This will ensure, as Javier explained, co-instability, co instability sorry, which is something that is strongly enforced in OpenStack, including even now that we could <coughs> use containers for different projects, each one having different requirement versions or things like that. Op OpenStack is still enforcing installability because we don't want to enforce a topology or the use of containers or isolation between services. We want to be as flexible as possible. Uh, we want to make sure that whenever a security issue happens or there is a bug, all services can work with that. Okay? In case some project is failing, can <coughs> not work with this new version of WebOp, for example, uh, the project is required to fix it, to start working with WebOp, okay, or with the new version, okay, and they are enforced to fix it as soon as possible, okay. Once this review is merged, okay, so this all OpenStack project will start using this new version upstream. One of the nice things in SUL, in Software Factory, is that it can monitor what happens in another project, in this case OpenStack, so it can trigger f events on when something happens in upstream project. In this case, what we do is that we create a new review, okay, proposing to update that new dependency in RDO, okay, so the OpenStack change or review is, yeah, is, okay is automatically creating a new review in RDO, a corresponding review, okay, well, it's bumping from, in this case, it's from, a, for example, 1.8.2 to 1.8.3, so you can see here that we are doing exactly the same. We are proposing a new package, which is 1.8.3, okay? This means, this is useful by itself, because it's just a way to monitor what's happening and we have visibility on all these changes and we see, okay, there is a request for a new uh, update, a dependency update. Which is for Stain. Stain is the version which is currently under development in, in OpenStack. So there is a new dependency that it's coming to Stain to update WebOp. But it's not only that. It's not only used for monitor or for us to be aware of that, but it will also to it will follow our policies to try to reveal in case it exists in Fedora and it's possible, it will automatically try to reveal in RDO. Okay. We have said before that typically for dependencies we ha we bring a Fedora package and we rebuild it in CentOS. So this is what this review is doing automatically. Okay. It, when there is a review that is fixing the candidate, as we have seen, uh, okay, this is stain candidate. This is very important in, in, in OpenStack, in CBS. We all work with the concept of 
tags, okay? So the meaning of the tag is that, well, it's Cloud 7 OpenStack is obviously a OpenStack package, then Stain is the version of OpenStack, and Candidate is the face of each package. Candidate means that we are just rebuilding the package, okay? So that's the goal of our uh, candidate review is just to rebuild the package, that's it. So, this is, for example, how the, uh, this review looks like in, in, in RDO, okay? In this case, it's looking for it in Fedora, okay? You see that, okay, this package is available in Fedora. Let's try to rebuild. So, we're rebuilding CVS in CentOS build system, okay? And that's it. We have automatically from an upstream change, we have a new build ready for RDO. Okay, so this is the second goal that we have when we started automating, uh, making automation independencies. First one was to monitor, to not work reactively anymore, to work much more proactively. So this is the first goal, we got it. Second is to try to get builds automated instead of doing manually. This allows also a much better traceability and visibility of who is doing what, okay? Everything in Gerrit, well, I, will, I will go through a Gerrit change later, but everything is Gerrit is page review, so how we all have visibility of who proposed a change, who has approved a change, and what happens in the, in the middle, let's say, what jobs were triggered, et cetera, so that's cool. Okay, and then we have at this stage, what we have is a new package created in CentOS, but it's not still ready for users. Before it's uh, pushed to a repository that, we, that is available for users, we need to make sure that it works as expected and we are not breaking anything. In CentOS, we have three different stages in the case of, uh, of uh, OpenStack. One is candidate, we have seen, just packages built. We have testing stage. Testing stage is where a package can be tested by users as a test bed, let's say, to make sure from, to get feedback from users, and it's also used in CI jobs, okay? This is testing, testing stage. And final stage is release. When a package is into release stage, which is release tax, this means that the package will be signed and published into official mirror, uh, CentOS mirrors, okay? So before pushing packages into testing or release, we need to make sure that packages work as expected, okay? For that, we need to trigger some, okay, let's make this example. For that, we need to make sure that OpenStack can work in different scenarios and configuration with this new version of software, okay? For that, we use another, again, reviews over RDO info project, okay? In this case, the only difference with a previous one is that we are using, for example, using different tags. In this case, instead of candidate, we are changing testing tags. And in this particular case, it's interesting because we are updating a package, okay, a package that Heikel did to fix some issues in two different versions, not only Stain, but Rocky, and stain. We need this new build in those two releases to fix a bug, okay? So in the same re uh, review, we can update both releases, okay? As part of the review, we start running some jobs, okay, to make sure that the, pa the package, the repository that, uh, is consistent, we are not missing any requirement, that some, sometimes when we update a requirement, we are needing more requirements that were not previously, so it's kind of dependencies change. Okay, so we check that that's not happening, and we check, let me point, this one job, one of the most interesting one, is the one that is testing, you can see in this case, seven OpenStack deployments on each of the affected releases, okay? In this case, we have Rocky and Stain jobs testing different different uh, services, different configuration, using different, uh, for example, um, networking, OVN, OpenB switch. Well, we are testing that all those cases are working fine, so we don't break anything. When, they, when all those jobs pass, and someone approves, all those reviews 
needs manual approval for some of the RDO contributors and 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 well, people with the with the required permissions. The package will be automatically tagged in the rocky testing and stain testing. So the package will be pushed to the repositories so it can be consumed, as said before, by testing user in this case um, and CI. Okay. Uh, so let me, before moving into CI, I think it can still be useful. Okay, so I don't know if it's... I'm going to show a failed case, which is interesting also. <laughs> okay, so this is a Gerrit review, okay, on, on audio info. This is one of... This change has been created by the bot, okay? So it has been automatically created... by this upstream review, by this update. Okay, so this is the upstream review, which is updating dependencies, which is also created by a bot. So everything, nowadays, everything is done by bots. We are not needed anymore. So this is just updating <laughs> some dependencies. Okay, okay, and we want to get this into RDO as soon as possible. So, <coughs> This is creating this corresponding patch when we are adding some new dependencies into candidate, stain candidate. This is all for master. In OpenStack, has uh, policies also for requirements. So in stable branches, they only push updates when there is really a bug or there is a security issue, but not proactively for the under development release is the one that is proactively updating every possible dependency as soon as possible when it's updated in PyPy. Okay. And in this particular case, for example, you can see that one of the job is failing. This is from well, uh, this is from yesterday. So it's the job that is failing it's because it can reveal the dependency from Fedora. So this will require us to ask Fedora guys to please update this as possible. Okay, there is some feedback provided by the job. For example, okay, this is the last version which are in Fedora. For example, we are requiring 040 and we have only 039 and so on. So, okay, this is like the chain that we want to move as the project of the, abstract, of the OpenStack upstream project is so fast following new releases. Many times we are faster than Fedora even. <laughs> and so we need to ask Fedora maintainers to please update this package and get it uh, as soon as possible to RDO. It usually goes fine. And that's a little bit what I wanted to explain. I think that, well, I, this is a showcase about how we apply the release early and monitor close principle in RDO and how this, how in this case, tools are helping to, to automate everything. So if you have any question about RDO itself or about the tooling, whatever. Yeah, this is the right time. Um, as the um, Colorama um, maintainer, I'm happy to take patches. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we provide pull requests, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Hedel. So out of curiosity, in case you, in case you had to answer, um, what's the, every time you have to go to Fedora to look for, a, hopefully to have a, an M MVR that matches what you need now because the version of the dependency has been increased, do you have numbers on what your hit ratio, so how many times do you actually find what you're looking for? Just out of curiosity. Is it something that happens often every time? Normally, every time you go for it, you find it? Depends. For example, uh, typically, we, as I said before, we are very fast in OpenStack. So 
we are beyond Fedora, so, and the problem right now is that Fedora, for example, Fedora and Apple, or Fedora and RHEL, sorry, has diverged quite much because RHEL is from, RHEL 70 from some years ago. So we have had to modify, or typically in, I would say, half the cases or something like that, we need to put patches on top of Fedora to make the rebuilds on CBS. I don't know if that's the numbers you were looking for, or, but I'm not sure if I, I, I'm replying the... Yes. So we, we don't have hard numbers yeah. on, on how many times we want to rebuild something on, on CBS. And okay, so what's the general, like, general feeling? So, I mean, the general you know, feeling no, about numbers is every week, typically, every week we receive updates for something probably like in, the, in around, let's say, 10 updates, things mm -hmm. like that. It also depends on the time of the cycle because at, the, at some stage we freeze the requirement project is frozen right before GA and it's frozen in for two or three weeks, which is the calm and peace phase <laughs> <laughs> from dependencies. And the rest is, uh, I would say, it's ar around about rebuilds, I would say about 10, maybe around 10 per week, something like that. That's not bad then. Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, in your opinion, what are the areas that needs to be improved or where we are lacking in uh, automating this task? In my opinion, the main problem we still have is, as said before, it's not about the, not much about the automation, this automation part, but it's about the, as said before, about the compatibility between Fedora and currently and CentOS, okay? Uh, as time goes, the package, the specs or the package definition in Fedora doesn't work well for CentOS. And at that time, it, we always require manual work to fork and adapt it to CentOS. And this is a blocker for all automation. This is something hard, for example, especially now in Fedora, Fedora 30, all Python 2 is being retired, okay? RHEL 7 is only Python 2. So this is, for me, this is the big blocker for automation in CentOS. The solution is not really an easy one in our side. The real solution will be probably when we have a next RHEL version which reduce that, that divergence or that difference between Rel seven and Fedora. So, so, so Rel, right sorry, right now. next Rel. Okay. So right now, as Fedora packages, what we can do is try to keep compatibility macros to make sure that uh, the same package will build on Rel seven and, and Fedora, which is sometimes we we see that they get lost. So yeah. if we are ripping out the Python two package, instead of adding uh, some conditionals, we just remove the whole part from the spec to make it look cleaner. Yeah, it's neat, small, but then we completely break compatibility. If I may add one thing, if you want to contribute, uh, take a look at, uh, well, there isn't one here, but uh, at Federal Builders, because we are not voting, but fixing the issue is helpful there. So, so it has to be the last one, because otherwise we, don't, we won't get lunch. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so let me, let, let me be short then. Um, thanks a lot for the explanation about how you build and maintain the package repository, including rebuilding on the, the CBS infra we provide you. Uh, I was just wondering about, because that's for the classical RPM-based uh, deployment of OpenStack, but it seems that the new kit on the blocks is container-based deployment with uh, Koala, Koala Initiative, if I remember well the name. Yep. So is Koala following the same principles? So you still provide the RPM to the container built, and then you test the container the same way? Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, for in, in RDO, RDO, well, in fact, I would say more in triple O, which is rea really the, the one using containers. They build containers using RPMs, okay? For testing, what we use those containers and we update those containers with RPM packages, okay? So we even, when using containers, we are still using RPMs, the same RPMs as the base to build containers. 
In fact, Cola has the capacity to create containers from source and from PyPy and so on, but it's not from RDO perspective and from OpenStack, we are not using that. <laughs> okay, uh, I think that's it for questions. Maybe if you have more questions, you can uh, tell them over lunch. Um, so, so it's time for lunch. Uh, we will all, I mean, we